Hello and welcome back for another edition of London Direct. The SMB really shook things up last week. Brokers went bust, investors went broke. So what now for the FX market? Well, I've been to the offices of Global Reach Partners to find out. We have to start by talking uh, about the SMB last week. Uh, the, the repercussions are still being felt now. Um, from your point of view, how is it shaking up the forex markets, in particular the euro? Um, I mean, uh, they absolutely threw a grenade into the marketplace last week. Um, in terms of the euro, it has made the euro substantially weaker moving forward. If you look at how um, the euro was positioned, it was weak against every single currency bar the Swiss, Swiss franc because of the intervention they were um, doing to keep it pegged at, or a, le a natural pegging of this 120. As soon as they moved, um, removed that peg, it ultimately led to a, a redistribution and a new equilibrium being found um, on the euro, which again, given the news that we're probably expecting this week, has just drove the euro lower. And if you're looking at it on the um, on, against the dollars now trading at the, the lows since we see, we've seen since 2003. And obviously if you're looking at it against the Swiss franc, which is where a lot of the focus is, it has been pushing towards that parity level. In fact, it's been below parity again this morning. So we are seeing some volatile swings in the um, Swiss franc euro cross. This might be an oversimplification of the way things stand, but is, is there gonna, are there going to be a lot of euros swinging about? Um, because obviously the SMB uh, were, were buying euros to yep. protect their currency, and also we could see uh, euros printed from the European Central Bank. So is that, is that going to be another factor that's going to weaken this Yes, currency? absolutely. Um, I, I think Thursday meeting is, is pretty much nailed on that we are going to see um, a form of quantitative easing put in place. There's a lot of question marks over this form of quantitative easing. Um, one of the main ones, and as you say, a lot of you are throwing around is what's the size going to be? Um, the low estimates are looking at about 500 billion. Um, the top estimates I've seen have been at about a trillion euros. So if that all comes into the marketplace, then it all depends on how it's ebbed into the marketplace as well. We're obviously going to see some um, euro weaker on the back of that. And obviously, you continue to increase the supply of euros like anything, it loses value. What's your best guess about, about that meeting? Obviously, the, the consensus does seem to be that there will be some sort of action, but is there any, you've got any idea about the size and the timing? Um, the, average, the average forecast at the moment is in around 600 um, billion euros. Um, my general opinion is they're definitely going to be doing something. Um, I think it's all about whether Draghi can convince the market that what he's going to be doing is, or what, or what the S, or sorry, what the Euro ECB are going to do is enough to stem the deflation within the region itself. Um, my general opinion is though they are going to do something. They have got to be clear and transparent with this because of the legal hurdles that they faced in the last couple of months of trying to push this over the line. It definitely needs to be some transparency, and I think we are just going to see a weaker euro on the back of it. But what happens when uh, Greece turns around and said, "Don't fancy being part of the euro anymore," and, and there's all this action's already been taken? I think that's already factored in. I think if, if you look at the opinion polls at the moment, so it's so our lead in the opinion polls. The impact that Greece actually has on the marketplace and compared to where we were two, three years ago is a lot less. So I think they're prepared to wear that now. Let's, let's finish off by talking about the oil price. Um, obviously we've seen it come off strongly. Uh, it does seem to stabilise slightly for the moment at yep. least. Um, what does that mean for the central bank uh, policy makers as we go forward? Um, well, the, the, the both both um, Bank of England and um, the Fed are obviously keeping a close eye on what happens with inflation. Both um, countries' level of inflation is below that 1% level at the moment. They're both targeting 2%. So in terms of what it does for um, the interest rate battle moving forward, um, ultimately, if you, whilst it's stabilised here at 48, I think we can still see a, a low inflation environment. And whether or not they can actually be raising rates come Q2 or not is another matter. Um, some of the forecasts are still saying UK maybe Q4. The early forecasts are still predicting Q2 in the, in the US, but inflation could, pull, um, could actually cause a lot of arguments whether or not the conditions are there to be raising interest rates. Well, thanks to the guys there at Global Reach Partners. Stay tuned for more interviews here on Duke's Copy TV, including my ECB special. But for now, goodbye. <laughs>